The movie begins with a couple, Nora and Alec, from Los Angeles, driving to the countryside for a getaway. However, on the way to their destination, they get lost. They stop at a way station to seek help, but there's no one inside. Nora can't even find a bathroom to relieve herself, and instead, she discovers someone's cell phone and purse. Despite the strange find, though, she relieves herself in the open, without a care in the world. Unknown to her, there is a bloody skull of a human nearby. Nora then returns to the car and casually talks about the belongings she found at the way station. However, Alec doesn't appear overly concerned because he's more worried about the car running low on fuel. Along the way, the couple comes across a woman whose car has stopped working. Alec offers to help by jumpstarting her car and immediately gets to work. Meanwhile, the ladies start chatting and the woman asks Nora if she is married to Alec. This comment makes Nora feel very uncomfortable and she firmly states that it's none of her business. Unfortunately, the woman gets offended by by this and starts criticizing the couple. She even goes as far as calling them irresponsible and stupid. Meanwhile, despite his sincere attempts, Alec is not able to fix the car. Guess he is stupid. This further annoys the woman and she insults Alec by calling him a lousy boyfriend. Enraged that they are being chastised for no reason, the couple gets into their car and drives away, leaving the woman behind. While driving, Nora expresses her disdain for the countryside, citing encounters with people like the old woman as one of the reasons. After a while, they find a crowded diner and stop over to have a meal. The waitress tells them the menu, and they order non-veg burgers and drinks. However, when they try it, they find the taste strange. Alec then notices that a man is staring at Nora weirdly. This makes him uncomfortable, and he insists on leaving. Nora also agrees, and they prepare to exit the diner without finishing their meal. However, on their way out, the man abruptly stops them and warns Nora that she is not safe in this village. In the next scene, Alec appears to be genuine worried about what the man said earlier, but Nora believes he is merely a local eccentric. After a while, they stop at a gas station and Alec refuels the car. He also inquires with the cashier named Andrew about nearby lodging options, and the latter directs them to some rental cabins further up the road. Continuing their journey, they come across a dilapidated cabin. Initially, Nora is unsettled by the rundown place, but with no options left, they decide to enter. As they climb the stairs together, they are startled by the presence of the landlord, whose face is twisted and distorted. He greets them warmly and asks if they are in need of a room. When Alec confirms that they are looking for a place to stay, the landlord leads them to a nearby cabin and reveals that it used to be rented by scouts and campers. After he leaves, an anxious Nora confides in Alec, expressing her suspicions about the landlord. However, he calms her down, assuring her that everything is fine. As the two talk, the camera pans to the top of the adjacent bunk bed, which appears to be blood-stained. During the night, a person wearing a sheep mask is seen hiding under the couple's bed. He slowly emerges from under the bed and looms over them threateningly. Bah! He says. The next morning, Nora wakes up to find herself confined in a dog cage. The ghastly sight almost gives her a heart attack. She attempts to free herself while calling out for Alec, but he is nowhere to be found. A man with a goat mask then appears and thumps her cage, indicating that she should remain quiet. Scared, Nora obliges, but after the masked man leaves, she tries to escape. She notices a rock outside her cage and manages to grab it through the bars. She then tries to use it to smash the lock of her cage, but just then, the goat-masked man returns, along with another man wearing a cow mask. The latter approaches her, slowly, and sedates her. Moo! he says. Later on, Nora regains consciousness in a barn strapped to a chair with her legs forcibly parted. A rabbit man then appears and artificially inseminates her with a- God, every- we're doing too many of these. With a large syringe-like tool, leaving her screaming in pain. Next, Nora is placed in her cage and taken somewhere by the two men from earlier. On the way, she notices other masked people in the barn doing their daily chores. She also sees a man cutting up a man's corpse. It becomes apparent that in this farm, human meat is produced. After a while, the two men ultimately drop Nora in the barn. The scene then cuts to a room where Alec and other men have been confined in a cage. As he regains consciousness, he learns that he has been tightly gagged and stripped of his clothes. Alec tries to talk to the other men in the barn, but without success. A group of the villagers then appears, and one by one, they bash the heads of the captive men to knock them out. Soon, the villagers turn to Alec in what turns out to be a scary scene. <laughs> 
He tries to escape, but the bad guys eventually knock him out. Next, an unconscious Alec is loaded onto a trolley and taken to the slaughterhouse for further processing. The scene then reveals that the compound is actually a communal farm, and it is run by individuals in animal masks. They capture men and butcher them for meat, while women are reared for their milk. The harvested meat is subsequently utilized to provide catering services for weddings and various ceremonies. Shockingly, it is revealed that the landlord from earlier is the leader of this disturbing organization. An apt metaphor for the way that we treat animals. However, the director of this movie still has some problems to work out. In the next scene, the landlord is seen receiving a huge order that requires a large quantity of meat. However, a worker informs him that they don't have enough men to meet the demand. With no options, the landlord decides to use one of the women, who is confined for milk production. He then proceeds to the dairy barn, where numerous cages hold lactating women. The landlord assesses their milk production rates to choose the least productive woman for slaughter. During the inspection, he notices that a woman has been covertly breastfeeding her baby. This angers the landlord as he has been struggling to meet the demand of milk and meat for his business. On his orders, a worker then seizes her baby, and I'm just not going to read this part. After the two heartless men leave, the woman is inconsolable, and she cries for her child. It's then revealed that Andrew from earlier in the movie works for the landlord, and his work is to direct the visitors to the cabins. However, Andrew is mentally disabled, and he talks to the distressed woman in a patronizing way. This infuriates her, and she calls him sick. In turn, Andrew also gets angry and calls her a bad human get wrecked. Later on, when a worker comes to the dairy barn to investigate, he discovers the woman dead. It's clear that Andrew killed the woman and ran away from there. When the landlord learns of this, he angrily orders his men to locate Andrew. Why the hell would we the viewer care about what happens to Andrew? Inside the barn, Nora discovers another captive who is situated next to her in a stable. The woman is connected to a milking machine and is being continuously milked. When Nora inquires about what is happening at the farm, the woman says, it's best if you don't know because there is no way to escape. She then discloses that she has been held at the farm for the purpose of breeding for the past two years. She has been bred repeatedly to the point where she can no longer conceive. As the two continue chatting, we hear the cries of another woman named Ashley, who has also been held captive for three years. Nora tries to offer support to her, assuring her that they will find a way to escape. However, Ashley asserts that escape is impossible in this location, as the masked men always manage to find them. In the slaughterhouse, a masked man catches Andrew playing with a pair of decapitated heads, as Andrew do. The lunatic pleads that he is not to blame, but he is forcefully taken away. The landlord then reprimands Andrew for neglecting his duties and explicitly instructs him to not play with his food. In this case, he refers to humans as the food, right? After this, Andrew is assigned to a masked supervisor who directs him to feed the imprisoned men their meats, I mean meals. However, while performing this task, Andrew accidentally tips over the food pot, spilling all of its contents. Fearing punishment, he flees, and the masked worker chases after him. They eventually end up inside the greenhouse, but Andrew seizes a handful of oregano and continues his escape. He rushes to the landlord in the kitchen, presenting the oregano as an offering. You can pretend it's pot and sell it to stupid teenagers, trust me. Turn a tidy profit. Strangely enough, the landlord accepts the gift and pardons Andrew. When the worker, who had been chasing after Andrew, arrives, he receives orders from the landlord to dispose of the unproductive women that are unable to produce milk. The scene then cuts to the barn where Nora watches the woman from earlier being processed and uh, turned into meat. After the butchers leave, she breaks down in despair. However, she is soon interrupted by a noise at her door. To her surprise, Alec is still alive and conscious. Nora gasps in excitement, and after a bit of struggle, they somehow manage to escape the stables. However, the danger is not over yet, as they still have to make their way across the property while avoiding the masked men. Nora assists Alec in getting to a truck for their getaway, but it fails to start at a critical moment, forcing them to continue on foot. Eventually, they come across a church where they take a break. As the couple looks around, they notice that the faces of Jesus and his followers have been replaced with animal masks. Just then, a man in a cow mask enters the church. He starts praying. Dear cow Jesus, please grant me my cow wish. And the couple takes this as the perfect opportunity to flee. Unfortunately, they are caught and the cow man rings a bell, alerting the other workers at the farm. While running, Alec becomes trapped in a bear trap, and Nora tries to free him. However, upon seeing the masked workers approaching, Alec tells her to run. Nora doesn't want to leave the love of her life behind, but she has no other choice. As she reluctantly runs away, the workers catch up to Alec and crush his head 
with a rock. Meanwhile, Nora takes refuge in the male barn. There, one of the male captives notices her presence and silently signals her to flee for her own safety. Nora swiftly approaches his cage and asks him to help her escape from the wretched farm. With some hesitation, the man tells her about a bus that the workers utilize to transport their victims. He also tells her where the workers keep the keys. With this information, Nora heads to the spacious area where numerous cars are parked. There, she spots a masked driver, fortunately with his back turned to her. Taking advantage of this, Nora strikes him in the head with a hammer and knocks him out. Right then, three masked individuals spot Nora and run towards her, but she gets in the car and drives through the fence. Unfortunately, she soon runs out of gas and is forced to exit the car. She is then chased across the property, and with no options left, Nora ultimately returns to the stables. There, she frees Ashley and helps her outside. They then make their way to the bus, but learn that the keys are missing. Although disappointed, Nora remembers what the caged man had told her earlier, so she goes to the specified house to retrieve the keys. She manages to find them, and then returns to the bus. For some reason, Ashley appears very worried, and when Nora starts the bus, she realizes that all the seats have been occupied by masked people, much to her horror. The movie ends with the masked workers gathered around a table, where Nora and Ashley have been served like roast piggies, with apples in their mouths. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.